Hello everyone, this is RP Fridays number 9, another nice RP session with me, and this time the topic is Robot That Plays Arkanoid. My name is Roman, I am part of Robot ICT, uh, the company based in Czech Republic where we love to automate every process possible. So, some quick info about us, we are based in Czech Republic and uh, we use our fo focus on uh, we focus on automation in different kind of industries we do this using rpa which is robotic process automation and we also use our own workflow automation software which is more specialized on networks data centers and large it environments if you want to know more about robot ict our academy our community all links are in the video description if you will enjoy this webinar please give us a like and subscribe it would mean a lot to us so let's do it let's start RPA Fridays. This will be a sh live showcase of some RPA technology. We will have some task of problem to solve and I will not go super deep into the theory and this time we will have fun. Because last time I was showing example of recursive workflows, how to run uh, processes in parallel, which are super interesting, but also quite advanced. So this time I realized we should go a little bit off topic and see something fun. So this time we will have fun with our robot and we will make a robot that actually plays a game, a game of Arkanoid. For those who don't know, Arkanoid is a simple, basic, old school game that I will show you how, how, to, uh, how it works uh, soon. This was also one of our RPA challenges on our community forum. So if you like RPA challenges, if you like to challenge yourself in small tasks, you're welcome to join our community forum. It's, I believe, the first link in the description and you can take part in another RPA challenges. Now let's take a look at the game itself. So this game was created by a guy called Scott Schiller. Thank you very much for this one. And in, uh, in really late in 2007, uh, which is quite old, uh, but it still works. But it says that the, the, the game was introduced in 1987, so still pretty fun. This is all running in the browser using HTML and JavaScript, which is really nice for us because we can easily work with it. So let's take a look at the game. This little bit hidden menu here uh, allows me to start the game and then uh, it loads. So the goal of this is to get rid of the bricks. There's a little platform that I can move uh, using my mouse, only moving it. And uh, the first click starts the game. So then I can move the platform to the left and to the right to catch the ball uh, and so so the ball does not fall and there are also some bonuses falling down but I, I wouldn't care about it now and the goal is to get rid of all the blocks okay and catch some bonus see there was a bonus okay so once I played around a little bit I thought okay so then I need to move the platform in the coordinates in the x coordinates exactly where the ball is but uh, how to do it? Well, then probably I will need to get coordinates of the ball and then move the mouse somewhere. But how to move the mouse? There is eventually no uh, activity like move mouse to a coordinates in a UI path. So I need to probably use something else. If the game is running and I click anywhere, it does not affect the game. It actually will start the game if I will lose a life. So. I thought I will use activity click. And then I realized that every time, every, every, anywhere I move the mouse, it's always uh, aligned with, uh, it, it always works right and left, right? So I can, I can control the platform from the top here. And I can control the platform, wow, uh, because uh, it will be aligned with the ball. So if, every time if I will move along the ball, oh, okay level two, <laughs> uh, then it will work. Uh, so the goal is to click on the ball. That's the easy, easy way how to do it. So okay, I, I, will, I will pause the game and I will go to UI path. So first of all, I want to put here activity at each browser to work with the browser and indicate the browser on a screen, which will be this one. So let's check the selector. So there is nothing uh, unexpected, like, like for example, level two. So let's give there um, asterisk and to rename it. That's how I like it. And then the only thing I want to do is to create an infinite loop. Uh, for this, I can use while, or this time I will use a flowchart just to have a nice infinite loop. 
so I will create all the all the simple code to to play the game in flowchart and you will see that this will be really easy and I hope you will like this little uh, not so serious example so what I need is to implement a click activity so click and to repeat forever I just will I will just <laughs> create a arrow that goes from the activity to the activity itself and I indicate the element inside the browser which luckily I can indicate the ball which is cool Let's check the selector. Okay, seems okay. Nothing really complicated. Click, let's rename it. Click ball. Good. And let's uh, see how it works. We have everything set up here by default and let's see how my robot will be working. So I will run it and unpause the game. Okay. Unfortunately, this was lost. But ah, see now my hands are off the keyboard and the robot is already doing something. So it clicks on the ball and this uh, moves the platform. But as you see, it's rather slow. It's, it has a delay, which is, which is caused by the default settings and also caused by some performance or maybe some hardware limitations, though this is not uh, intended, UiPath is not intended to play games, so it's not intended to be so super fast, even though it can be really fast and other things. It's not so fast on playing games, but it kind of works, right? It's it's doing what, uh, what I expect it to do. Um, so how to improve it? Let's, let's see if I can improve it. Uh, I will, uh, okay. Okay, this will, this will be maybe complicated because it still follows the mouse but I will close it and let's do a little improvement on the timing. So there are some uh, properties on the right side that you can uh, improve to improve click activities. So maybe you will learn something more. And this is delay after and delay before. So if you don't set anything there, you can actually uh, change this globally. I can maybe show you something little. When you go to project and this uh, gear wheel, you can change a UI automation classic and you can change the times here in the settings which is quite cool and you can change it to the whole project. Anyways, this was just a simple. So delay after and delay before. Why there is a by default 300 milliseconds and why there is 500, 200 milliseconds delay after and before. So this is designed so it's not so fast. Yeah, you may think this is crazy because we want to automate something and we want it to be faster than human, but still it's much faster like this than a human. Uh, but the systems are not ready for robots. So to give the system some time to uh, relax, some time to breathe in, breathe out, li not literally, of course, there is a default, uh, small default delay. Anyways, we don't need it because we want it to be zero. So I, if I put zero here, zero, zero, then it should be much faster. Also, I want to tick simulate click. So I will, I don't, when I use uh, move my cursor, it's not really so... Um, it's not following, it's not uh, moving my cursor so much. Okay, so this should be quite easy. And let's see what, uh, if will be, if there will be any improvement and if the game will be fine. Okay, game over. Lovely. We're starting again from level one. And you see the mouse cursor is not moving because I put there simulate type and, and it's moving much faster. And maybe this will be a little bit boring because, uh, of course, the moves of the platform to the right or to the left, they change the move of the ball. So if you wanna, if if I would now play like this and it's kind of boring because it just goes up and down, and I want to do some action, then I uh, I may move it to the side a little bit, okay, like this for example, and change the direction of the ball. But the the idea is that the robot is now playing the arcanoid itself, and we can talk a little bit and see if. Uh, how far it will go, but it's pretty boring because it will go slowly and not uh, there will there won't be much action in it. Sometimes there is a bonus that uh, creates more than one ball, and then the robot will only take the first original ball, and the other balls will ignore. So you can maybe think about improvements in this way to catch more than one ball, and so on, and so on. And then in certain moment uh, when the level is finished. Uh, there is some kind of progression that you have to move to the side, uh, move the platform to the side. So this could be 
uh, easily build upon to play the Arkanoid, of course, if you love to enjoy and have a robot that plays game. I'm, I'm thinking about other games that can be played by robots, uh, but they need more logic. Like, this is not a logical game, but there are logical games that eventually can be improved, maybe a chess or maybe a Minesweeper. But, you know, you can think yourself, oh, there was a brick that reappears. Okay, crazy. Good, so you can see that with the, just a simple one activity, I solved this issue of a robot playing Arkanoid game. Oh, it started to be quite fun. So think about some other games that can be maybe automated and post uh, and uh, tell me in comments what do you think. And now it's time for the questions and I will answer them in a chat. Meanwhile, you are watching this. And I will answer them in the comments if you will um, uh, ask later. It's no problem. So th that was a simple example. The robot is playing Arkanoid. I'm happy and everything is working s smooth. This time it was a little bit shorter. I hope you don't mind that uh, uh, this time it was a little bit more playful and less, uh, less deeper. And uh, I hope you had fun with this little project. I will answer all your comments and let's take a look at what we have there in the end. So, questions, please, in the comments, in the chat, anywhere, I will answer. Thank you for your attention. And please, if you're interested, you can download the workflow from the first link in the video description. And you can also take a look at our community forum where not only the RPA challenges are posted and not only information about the RPA Fridays, but also some interesting things to learn so far pretty much from UiPath, but uh, I would love to also introduce section for Blue Prism and uh, Python automation. And if you want to take a part in it, please come join the forum and be creative and be active. I will be more than happy for some knowledge sharing. If you like this video and you just come to it randomly, you can sign up to RPA Fridays to get regular updates or regular uh, information every week what's the topic for the next uh, RPA Friday. So you can also subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any videos. So thank you for your attention and see you next Friday.